This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Everybody, look in big red letters. That's me, Alex. In white, it says the Ramble. That's the program that goes till midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, out to California we go. Yes, Larry Bubbles Brown. Hey. Yes, buried in <laughs> buried in crappy weather. And well, you guys are never happy. <laughs> no, we either we have two seasons: fire and flood. So. <laughs> Okay, fire and flood. And now we're in the flood season. Oh, so. boy, Jesus. You know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's terrible. It's really not good. Oh, uh, well, what the hell? 100 inches of snow in Tahoe. Huh? 100 inches of snow in Tahoe? <laughs> Past week, yeah. It's just Wait, crazy. You, know, you know what's terrific about that, if you think about it, okay, is that... Um, it it gives you a big snowpack, and that means this summer, when that all melts, comes down and fills up the lakes and the reservoirs and things like that, you know? Yeah, and it's been pretty dry here the past few years, so that'll be good. So. I saw a report the other day about the lakes in Marin County, up, up, up above San Anselmo, where I lived. There were these five lakes. There's Lake Lagunitas, Lake Bontempe, Lake... Uh, I don't know, Lake whatever. And there were five of them. And they we used to go hiking around and everything. And they were also used as reservoirs for Marin County. All right? Um, so we'd go hiking up there. And so I saw a report on the air the other day. They showed the lakes. They were empty. They were like almost bone dry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there is no, it's like as though the, the God came along and said, I hate California, and I'm going to put all this pestilence in their way. You know, floods and non-floods and fires and uh, whatever. So, but Well, that would, it could lower the population. It could lower the population. Uh, but, so anyway, so it, it's been quite a quite a time for you guys out there. You know, yeah, it's not good. Uh, and uh, 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 you, by the way, I have to before we get, go any further. I have a couple of things. Number one, I'm a little tired today. I don't know why I'm a little wonky. So if I sound strange, just tell me. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, but uh, I suddenly, before I was going to go do this, I went, "Oh, better run into the uh, bedroom and put on some pants." Because I'm talking to Larry. And I'm going, why do I put on pants? <laughs> what, what is, the, what is my, my thinking about that? Larry's not going to see that I, I'm yeah. only in my underwear. But if some, we're in the same room, I would demand you have pants on. It, well, but, but uh, for instance, do you have pants on right now? No. No? I got my shorts on. You you got your underpants on, huh? My running shorts. Oh, your running shorts. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, that's that's pants. I mean, I have I have uh, kind of uh, these aren't pants exactly, but they're kind of like you know pajama bottoms and things like that. So, you know, but I I just feel I've, I and I said to myself, why do I suddenly feel I have to get dressed? You know, I can't. I could sit here naked and it wouldn't matter. We're do we're not doing this by video. No, and don't uh, people that uh, read the news uh, just wear a, they don't have uh, nice clothes underneath the desk, right? Right. Uh, in fact, to tell you the truth, folks, when you watch your uh, local newsman, he's sitting there behind the desk, he's probably got jeans on. Yeah. Um, uh, in fact, I always wore jeans, and then I would wear a, a jacket, a tie, and a shirt, and all of that. When I would go out and do some of those stand-up things for um, for log on TV, because what I realized is that I could be wearing jeans and nobody really notices it. You know, they're only looking at the top half of you. 
even when you're sh shown full length. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I I uh, I never ever put on a pair of suit pants. I'd wear a suit jacket and tie and shirt and a pair of jeans. Like when you did comedy tonight. Yeah. And, uh, did I when I did comedy tonight? Did I wear jeans? Huh. You, definitely, you definitely had a jacket and tie on top. Yeah, I, I don't think I was wearing jeans. I think it was actually because there was an audience there. And so I kind of dressed for the audience. But anyway, so th that's the strangeness of me thinking that I've got to take my, you know, put some pants on for Larry. That was, well, that was the beauty of radio. You, you never had to worry about how you looked. Oh, it, that's true, but I didn't ever come without pants on, you know, <laughs> because I had a studio audience, right? Yeah. yeah but, you know, really, uh, and normally when you do a radio show, you really don't have to look any particular way, you know. It's radio. Of course, when I was at Sirius XM, uh, I, I didn't dress up, but I didn't dress down. I wore jeans and, you know, maybe a shirt and things like that because I was going into an office building, big office building, Rockefeller Center. And uh, that dictated that I at least care about my my look a little bit because later on in the day, the bosses were going to look at me and I didn't want them to go, is he coming in that way again? You know, so. But, uh, uh, but as a comedian, you can wear anything you goddamn feel like wearing, right? Yes, I think male comedians are probably considered the worst dressers on the planet. Really? I think, oh, you have a horrible reputation. I never thought about that, but you really are, you don't think about it. Now, how about female comics? Do they think about how they look? Yeah, they're much better than the males, for sure. But, a, but much better in what way that they 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 wear nicer clothes or yeah exactly uh, the average male comedian dresses like the campus rapist I think That's <laughs> just torn torn jeans <laughs> looks very suspicious the campus racist uh, <laughs> rapist uh, or a campus racist that's possible yes. too uh, yes. geez almighty yeah yeah I, I um, Radio people, how do they dress? Eh, they, you know, they dress. They dress like the music they're playing. You know. It was yeah, I wonder how that. I looked at there was a. Uh, I saw some video of San Francisco in the fifties, and just everybody on downtown is well. Everyone had suits on. So. Uh, you notice that too, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that, that you look at old old film of people back. And walking down the streets of New York back in 1950, they're all wearing suits. They've all, they're all dressed to the nines. There's nobody out there looking like a slob. No, there's uh, <laughs> much sharper back then. I like kind of liked it, even though I hated wearing suits myself. Now, if we took a shot of the street and people walking down it, I doubt if you'll see very many suits, even in places like Madison Avenue, where suits used to reign supreme. Yeah, and I would think there's absolutely no suits in the tech industry. Uh, I wouldn't think so, no. No. Uh, uh, no, I, when I worked in the tech industry, I, I, everybody just came like they felt like coming, you know. Yeah. And, and they, they fight for, in the tech industry, they allow you to have your individualism. You know, everybody has a cubicle. Uh, because that's the way things are. You have a cubicle, and you know that's what you work out of at an office building. Which, by the way, are going the way of the dodo because everybody's starting to work from home. All right. So, uh, uh, I, uh, uh, it, 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 you know, people just uh, used to in at least in Silicon Valley, they would have a cubicle, and then they were allowed to dress up their cubicle in any way that felt good for them. Like over at Pixar, good example, I went over there. You, they have some of the most elaborate uh, cubicles <laughs> you see anywhere. Some guy would do it like in a war motif with the netting overhead and camouflage and everything. And next door it's like it's fairy tale land, you know? Everybody was able to take their cubicle and and uh, decorate it the way they wanted to. Uh, 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 an ethic I don't think you would have found anywhere else. 
That sounds like a fun place to work. Oh, I'm sure it's a fun place to work. But you know why they make it fun places to work? I'll tell you. This This is the great sin of Silicon Valley. And they never tell you this. And they always pretend like, oh, we have a very open company here where you can express your your personal uh, uh, desires like having a camouflaged uh, cubicle, things like that. And we allow all that. And also, we have free food. We have a free cafeteria where you can go in and we have some of the best chefs have designed the food here, you know, Pixar or wherever. And you go, wow, that's terrific. But then you realize these people are working 18 hours a day. That's what they did for a lot of the writers in TV in the 90s. Yeah, they didn't want you leaving. Right. So you were working. These people at uh, like uh, at uh, uh, any one of these tech companies go, well, I've got really good stock they're giving me in the company. I've got some stock they're giving me in the company, and they're this, and I get the free lunches and everything. How many hours a day do you work? 18? What? Yeah. <laughs> isn't, isn't that against child labor laws or something? I, would I don't think. know. <laughs> you know, so really, you're the sucker. You've been suckered into doing this thing. You get what I'm saying? You yeah. Know, and, and being told you get all these benefits. But you got, you got to work eighteen. You're, if you didn't work eighteen hours a day, they looked down on you. You know, you were yeah. A I team remember player. some people that wrote for Roseanne. Sometimes that they said those shows the, the writers would be there until three in the morning. Yeah, yeah. But uh, there's a, there's a certain positive thing to that because with TV shows they have a limited year. You know, it's not like you're working a full year. Right, right. Uh, and you probably take off half the year. You're not even working. You know, as a matter of fact, and I'm told this. This is, I know, I know this is true because I know people who have had to do it. Uh, let's say you're doing Roseanne. You're a writer for Roseanne. I think Feldman told me this story. Uh, you're a writer for Roseanne, and now it's come summer, and uh, the show hasn't been renewed yet. Okay. But so you you leave well ahead of renewals, you know, uh, and it's the end of the year. You have to clear out your desk and take everything home. Because if they don't renew you, you're going to have to do that anyway. Yeah. And uh, they don't want you do, coming back, so you have to do it now. So all all these offices clear out, and the people in them to clear out the stuff that's in there because – they may not get renewed. So every year, there's, that way there's an exodus. Now, there are exceptions. I remember the Letterman Show, nobody did that. But the Letterman Show was produced pretty much 52 weeks a year, technically. I mean, they took weeks off. But they were working pretty much a, a, a stream of shows for 52 weeks. Even when they were off for a, a, a holiday, a Technically, a lot of people were supposed to go in and uh, work anyway because they're planning future shows and so on. And they're paid for a uh, oh, 48 week uh, uh, time span. Uh, so they're hired for that. Am I making any sense here? Yeah, so that would, have, that would have been a good gig. Oh, you know what the best gig is? Ready for this? Game shows. Why? Why? Oh, because you. I think you tape. Um, Go ahead. You tape tape a year's worth in three months. Le- I think less than that. I mean, what happens is you you do a half a year's worth of shows. Okay, so that would be five times uh, 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 five times uh, uh, twenty six. Okay, how much is five times twenty six? That'd be uh, uh, thirty. I thought you were good at this. 130. 130. Okay, so you're going to do 130 shows. They do five shows a day, all right, for five days a week. So now we're up to what? Is that 25? Mm-hmm. Then we get a, so So to do 130 shows takes about six weeks. You do six weeks, and you're off for a year. Well, that's a very intense six weeks. <laughs> it's a very intense six weeks, but once you're through with that, and they sometimes they didn't do them all at once. You know, they did the six weeks. Maybe they did a week here and then a week there and a week there. But the fact is, t- 
technically you only had to work six weeks out of the year and you're making like a couple of million for being the host of the show you know yeah it's, uh, i think hollywood squares did that yeah so i mean that's a that's a terrific gig and and you know we're talking if you're a half hour game show okay there's only a couple of one hour game shows that i know of, but you're a half hour game show uh you, you know like like jeopardy or Price is Right, or, uh, not Price is Right, but uh, uh, Wheel of Fortune. Uh, those, you just, you know, you do them and go home. Six weeks, boom, out of there. And each day, you only have to work two and a half hours. God, it's great. <laughs> it's the best gig in Hollywood. Yeah. And, you know, and you wonder why some of these people decide, oh, you know, like Drew Carey, I'm going to do a game show. That's why. You know, he had a series, he had a comedy career, but if he, if he wanted to make money and he was offered the Price is Right, take it. You know, who's going to turn down that gig? Uh, I know a couple of people did turn down those gigs. They just thought it looked bad to do a game show, but uh, I guess you don't need the money. You wouldn't do it. Well, years ago, I was, uh, I, I, this guy I knew took me into, he said, I'm going to get you an agent. I said, oh, okay. You know, in those days, I had a hair down to my shoulders, and I, you know, wore jeans, and I looked like a hippie, right? Uh, and so uh, we uh, uh, we go up to this agent. He's on Madison Avenue, and I go in, and um, uh, I uh, sit down, and uh, they he, he talks to me a little bit, and the other guy came with me. But later, I think he, later he went. I think this guy later went, his name was Block, and he went to work for Carson. Um, he was one of his major producers. But anyway, he, he brought me over there, and he talked. he's talking to the guy, and the guy's talking to me, and we have this little... Then they go, and they talk to each other, right? It's kind of a private conversation. And then finally the agent looks back at me and goes, it, it, Can you cut your hair? And I said... Yeah, I suppose, you know, if the thing is right. He says, well, if you do, I think I can get you a game show. <laughs> and I went, wait a minute. This guy doesn't know what I do for a living. He doesn't know I'm the hippie on the radio, you know, that yeah. I'm I'm the, uh, what do they call me, the, the uh, 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 youth guru, I think was the term they used in the, in the press to describe me. Um. Uh, so he doesn't know what I do, and he's not going out to find me a job that fits me. He just knows he can get me a game show. And now I am kind of feel bad that I didn't take him up on that. Because <laughs> 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 I'm sitting here, how many years later, saying, you know what the best job is in television? You know, it's a game show. I don't know if it was back then, but it certainly is now. Uh, who would be like? Uh, who would be fabulously wealthy from games? Pat Sajak. Pat Sajak did very well. Um, um, at some point, though, he uh, he screwed up. I think he uh, he was a, a kind of a co-executive producer or whatever on Wheel of Fortune, and then he left Wheel of Fortune for a short time to go do something else. Not the late night CBS show. Maybe it was the late night CBS show. And then when that died, he came crawling back and said, I want my job back on wheel. And they said, you can have it back, but you can't be a producer anymore. Oh. So I think he took a little hit in the pocketbook on that one. All right. So, you know. But uh, uh, if you aren't doing what you're doing, which is what you're not doing because you can't do it when there's a COVID up or upsurge or whatever. What would you rather be doing? I thought about that. I don't know. I've had day jobs. They're just, they will drain you. Uh, I've actually thought about working in the zoo because I like animals. <laughs> Not the Holy City Zoo, but the zoo. No, the real zoo. Yeah, you, you would, you would. Okay, so uh, let's say. I mean, comedy. Let's say dies on you, and it dies yeah. for a lot of people, and they usually go into what real estate. Uh, a lot of them have gone into real estate. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, Robert Morton is now into real estate. Yes, that's what I heard. What now, Robert Morton? In case people don't know the name, was David Letterman's producer for many, many years. 
At NBC and CBS. And CBS, and then they had a falling out, and he left. Okay. Yeah, they did have a falling out. I never heard the story behind that, but I think something went down. Yeah, and uh, he was replaced by another kid. I can't remember his name now. Uh, but he then went over to, I think he went over to Fox, and you remember the, the Wilton North Report? Wow, how can I remember that name? Wilton North Report, you remember that show? Oh, that, I thought that was Barry Sand. Oh, was, oh, you're right, it was Barry Sand. I take it back. Sorry, it wasn't Robert Morton. Where did Morty go? I'm trying to Morty remember. went to Comedy Central and did The, the Mind of Mencia. Uh-huh. Or Carlos Mencia, and then... Uh, then I didn't hear about him for a while, so I didn't know what he was doing. And then I, yeah. on Facebook recently, popped up. He's, yeah, he's doing real estate, in, I think, in Beverly Hills. Yeah, well... Morty, which could be very lucrative. I would say. And he, Morty's a good schmoozer. So, you yeah. know, it's maybe a job that suits him quite well. Uh, and uh, I, but... Uh, wow, why did I mix up Barry Sand? <laughs> well, my... My first well, Barry, um, Barry Sand. First, but wait a minute, Barry Sand was a producer for Letterman at one point. Well, I'll tell you that. Yeah, he was a producer, and uh, during my my first Letterman, uh, I'd gone back in June and got bumped, and then Barry Sand got fired, and then Mor- I was Morty's first show as yeah. when he was producer. Yeah. yeah, then you brought the yeah Barry Sand produced David Letterman, the Late Show, not the Late Show, uh, Late Night, David Letterman at NBC. And then he yeah. got he they got rid of him and replaced him with Morty, who I think yeah. was already on staff or something like that, you know. And I guess uh, Barry Santa had this great. Uh, he'd been with the, the original uh, SCTV right. as a producer, right? That's why he was brought in. They thought he would work that kind of magic. On yeah, Letterman. and then then he did Wilton North, which was apparently one of the biggest flops in TV history, hosted by. I don't remember. Just tell me where they were from. Sacramento. Yeah. They were disc jockeys in Sacramento. That was right. Disc jockeys. Had, right. Yeah. Had, had never done TV. Okay. And they hired them to host the show. Wow. <laughs> that, that's a bad gamble right there. Uh, They've never done TV. Well, to begin with, to take people who have never done TV, who are radio, and suddenly put them on uh, uh, a national TV show. Uh, that's replacing David Letterman for all of Christ's sake, uh, and and uh, wow, you know. So they put they host they were the hosts of the show. I think the thing lasted like four weeks or something. It was very short. Yeah, I think it lasted slightly longer than the Chevy Chase late night show. <laughs> yeah, what's the show you talked about that got canceled in the, in the same night in some. It didn't make it to the West Coast. Oh, that was zones. the that was the AB, a, uh, ABC hired the guy who did Laugh In to do George Slaughter. George Slaughter, and it was called. I'm trying to remember the name. Is uh, 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 it had a hippie? It had a drug name, kind of. Uh, oh God, I'm trying to remember. I can't remember it right now. I'll look it up during our break here. Okay. Uh, but uh, uh, it, it it lasted one night. I had a friend. Who hey, was, one night. <laughs> I had a friend who was on it, and the next day he comes in, and he said it was like there was tumbleweed rolling through the offices. Uh, and he said, what happened? And they said, oh, didn't you hear we've been canceled? And when, were, when were we canceled? He said, in the middle of last night's show. <laughs> they actually canceled it in the middle of uh, it was Psych Out. What was it called? Something Out, I think. Uh, uh, something. I'll, I'll, I'll look it up. But I mean, it, what a what a what a story! What a story on that one. I'll tell you. I'll tell you some others soon. But listen, we got to uh, we got to kind of I think almost get out of here. We got about a minute left. Anything? Okay. Well, we it, love talking about failures. <laughs> well, it makes us feel better about ourselves. Yeah, it makes us better. <laughs> you know, I mean, the I mean, Wilton North report. I remember that now. They were disc jockeys. God. I may not have had ever had a national TV show, but at least I was on. You know, I wasn't on on Wilton North report. You know, <laughs> so I can't feel too bad about my career. Uh, uh, we we got to see if there's any video of that show available. Uh, you know something? I think I I found it on YouTube. There okay. is like a Wilton North Report episode or something. It, it it was it was a badly conceived idea, and it 
and it was on Fox. And Fox, you know, they were going up against Carson. What do you expect to happen? You know, it's the kind of thing, the kind of place you can't win. Anyway, Larry, good talking to you. Good seeing you, Alex. Let's do it again next week, okay? We will, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Larry Bubbles Brown. We enjoy your company. That's what we do. Anyway, uh, we, uh, we, uh, uh, excuse me if you were looking for our show last night uh, after the show, like on YouTube, just the, the one we post or the one we post on Facebook, uh, the video version uh, didn't get recorded last night. And the reason it didn't get, well, I want to explain why it didn't get recorded, but it just didn't. Um, was something went wrong with the gazorchness here. But anyway, so uh, it, it, I wasn't able to post it. And because YouTube does not allow me to download the last night's show from the, the uh, one that was recorded on the air by YouTube until the next day, about 12 hours later, I wasn't able to post it till earlier today. So uh, I'm sorry if a lot of you were looking for it and you couldn't find it. By the way, I've been told that there is a subscribe button at the bottom of this video uh, as it plays right now and it says subscribe and it would be very nice if you if you subscribe to us. I'm just mentioning that because everybody I see on YouTube goes, push the button down there and, and like me and friend me and tell me I'm wonderful. So, I don't know, just push the subscribe button, it would help. Every time I mention that, I lose two subscribers. Suddenly people realize, hey, I was subscribing to him and I really don't give a crap about that. Anyway, I think it's time to uh, bring in our citizen panel. There are some people lining up, one of which is in Australia, oddly enough. And uh, there they come. Yes, sir. Uh, there's uh, uh, Josh Wheeler. And there is Ross Manuel, uh, who is in uh, Australia. Crikey. Did I? Did and other I, such. And other such, whatever that is. Anyway, hello. How are you? And okay. uh, Jeff is, uh, I don't know. He's, uh, oh, he, he's, he's here. Okay, good. Just glad, to, glad to see that he's here. How are all you guys doing tonight? Hello, Pam. How are you? Wait a minute. You got to turn on. Wait a minute. Why, why am I not getting any audio? I, 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 there we, I, there we go. go. Okay. Hi, Happy Pam. Happy birthday to you. Oh, no. Happy birthday oh, no. to you. No, no. <laughs> Good talking to you. No, no, Happy birthday no, to you. No. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. You know, um, uh, I'll tell you what's happening. I'll tell you what's this happening. Jeff, turn off your... Yeah, there you go. You've got to turn it off. Anyway, um, uh, but here's what the problem is, okay? Uh, what happens is on Facebook, I think as I uh, do the, you know, as I have a birthday or something like that, it, it then sends out messages to everybody. Alex Bennett is having a birthday. Why don't you wish him a oh, happy yeah. birthday? I didn't hear that. I'm not on Facebook. I did. And then I, then I, then I, then I get like 8,000 happy birthday messages, okay, <laughs> which are from people I don't even know. That's right. And it clutters up my Facebook page, but as as fast as they appear, the next day or so, they all disappear. Facebook like gets rid of them, you know. But uh, so if I try to post a show tonight, go looking for it somewhere in all those happy birthday, Alex, have a good birthday. That's uh, why you're doing it on Facebook. What? What do you say? do it on Facebook. Uh, I'm, uh, how do you do it on Facebook? You just That's why she didn't put it on. Oh, that's why she didn't put it on Facebook. Well, I I thank her I thank her for not doing it on Facebook. Hello Jason, how are you doing? Good. Yeah. How's ev uh, uh, how, uh, how's everything in uh, Australia, uh Ross? Things are great here. Really? Yeah. Yeah, how's the uh, how's the whole COVID thing? Um 
So everything's basically reverting to normal. So we're getting, we're, but the cases are rising again because of Omicron being what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but like the borders are reopening, man, mass mandates are disappearing, check ins are no longer a thing because we're also 96.5% double vaccinated. So, oh, really? Oh, that's yeah. good. So we kind of don't care because the people who are getting it eh. deserve to get it. That's how you I said feel. That. You said that, not me. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I am uh, so happy that uh, uh, it's come back because I get to stay indoors now with an excuse. You know? <laughs> yeah. Marjorie always used to say to me, it's a beautiful day outside. You should go for a walk. And, and now I can go, well, no, I don't want to get COVID. And I'm supposed to go see Shecky on Sunday. And I'm going to, and he's going away. He's, take, he's taking a cruise, all right? Yeah. Uh, but I'm, uh, I, I was gonna go out Sorry. and see him before he went on his cruise, and now I really can't because I don't really wanna get on a subway, you know? He might not get COVID, but he might get the other disease that you get on cruise lines. Yeah, exactly. That's where you shit yourself. <laughs> yeah, oh, remember that cruise well, where everybody well, was simplest. getting diarrhea and it was a, a total mess? Hmm. But uh, so I, you know, uh, and then we were supposed to go out and have a lunch tomorrow, a birthday lunch, Marjorie and I at our favorite restaurant, and we're canceling it. We're not going to go, you know. Uh, it's it, we're, all of a sudden there's this surge in New York City. We had three times the cases today we did yesterday. Ah, you're vaccinated. You can go. Uh, they're saying they, they don't know. Listen, I finally decided the CDC and everybody else. They don't know crap, right? <laughs> you know, they really don't know crap. Uh, you see, that's why I think they're talking about the Omicron really isn't as as bad because I really, I, I don't know that it's not, but it's a lot of people who are vaccinated are getting it. And so In, then they don't have bad symptoms. Here's the thing. We need, people need to have confidence in these health organizations. And they don't have much confidence in them when they're starting to get differing messages like, well, the Omicron is going to be horrible. It's coming any day now. Well, maybe it's not as bad as we thought it was. Wait a minute. It is as bad as, bad as we thought it was. No, it's less bad than we thought yep. we thought it was going to be. And I mean, this goes on and on. Well, and then, Alex, you know, the problem with that is because the, the sampling, the data they have is from countries with very low vaccination rates. So they like in, in, in Central Africa and South Africa, they sit and they go, in those countries, it is horrible because the mass of the population is unvaccinated. But when it gets to highly vaccinated countries, they're like, well, the data that we had is based on a population that's 80% unvaccinated. Yeah, but what Whereas are we going to... population is only 20% yeah. unvaccinated. It's not that bad. Yes, people who are vaccinated are catching it, but they're not showing severe symptoms or they're being asymptomatic or they're not presenting to hospital. It's just those who aren't well, vaccinated. Well, some are. people are still vaccinated and i think they're still dying there are still those uh, people that that's uh, been true all along that's been true all yeah. along I, yeah. I don't know that anybody who has been vaccinated has died from omicron yet though hmm well but I mean, being said, it, you know like this like the spanish it. flu is something we vaccinate against every, every year it's called influenza b oh really yeah, influenza B, the, the spanish flu never went away it was just vaccinated against and you get a booster every year but I, I love these anti-vaxxers who are sitting there saying, oh, well, Omicron isn't as bad, so maybe we should just get Omicron instead of getting vaccinated. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, I mean, the, 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 the trouble is, I mean, I, I know this sounds stupid in Australia, but it's a political issue here. Now, I know that you find that hard to believe that anything can be a, pol a political issue. You know when it uh, when it's it's a matter of life or death, but it is here in America because we're silly, stupid people. You know, and I think it really is have not. It, it really is all over, and it, it's really uh, put out there what it, the political things that are. It's not really Democrats and Republicans. It's me versus we. There's a mentality of we, and there's a mentality of me, and that's really become prevalent during this whole thing yeah yeah um, i mean like australia is not immune to it i mean we do have a very small population percentage of our population who believes the same thing who believes that you know these mandates are impugning upon me 
because I, I the, the, the government should be impacting upon my right to choose things. I mean, someone was famously on TV saying, um, I don't wear and I, I don't carry an umbrella to protect you from the rain. Mm-hmm. And it's like, the, the, the whole point is that you, you are willing to let people die because you don't want to be inconvenienced. And that, that's where the problem comes from. And like the, 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 the difference is here is that I guess, our pop, I mean, if, if Australia had the population size of the United States, our group would probably be about as large as yours. Yeah. But because we've got the population equivalent to Oakland, <laughs> I mean, if you took Oakland as a, as, as a city and went like, okay, so what's, the, what's the percentage of people who believe in everything? You'll probably get a similar result to Australia. I, 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 I think you can get a, go to, get, you go to Oakland, you might find more people that believe in the vaccine than don't. I mean, you're going to have to go into the South to get people who are, uh, like in Kentucky. Hi there, Vernon. Speaking of Kentucky, um, uh, you know, the people down there, a lot of them don't get vaccinated because it's a, it's a, it's a government plot, right? Actually, we're close to 60% vaccinated in our state. Really? Do you know, I yeah. found out, what, what are we, we're... Are we in New York City? We're eighty-five percent vaccinated, but I don't know if that's both vaccinations or just at least one. Yeah, usually it's one. Usually it's one. I think it's something. <clears throat> but I think it's something like sixty, sixty-five percent for two, and then it's only twenty percent for uh, triple. You know, and I'm just wondering when we're going to have to go get our fourth. Yeah. I think my fourth, I'm going to get the Johnson and Johnson. I did the, the no. uh, Pfizer, and then I got Moderna for my booster. Then I'll, mm. maybe I'll try Johnson and Johnson. You're just going to spread the wealth around, right? Yeah, not, right. Re- not a so, good idea. Not a good idea. Not a Why good not? idea. No, yeah, you, you probably should stick with 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 who you have. Yeah, um, because uh, Pfizer or Moderna. Well, fi- but as a, uh, Johnson and Johnson is a different method. I mean, the fact that Johnson and Johnson has been disproven as actually effective in anything. Yeah, it's like eighty-five percent effective. Well, no, you don't. No, you, you, don't, don't you, don't you don't bleed because you automatically grow a band aid. Yeah. So it has it's a, uh, it has a very, very slight chance of blood clots. Yeah, and that's in the like young teenage boys or women but, but, who are on birth control. But it has control. a chance of pericarditis for the inflammation of the heart muscles. So. And and that even those percentages are still see, so small. See, but you're more small. likely to get hit by a car when you walk out of your house. So. Here, here's You're this right. this this uh, this That's... messaging that goes on where you don't know what to say and what works and what doesn't work and that doesn't give people confidence so that a guy like Alan there can say to somebody hey you better get the shot and then they go well we, we really don't know much about it and you know something they're kind of acting like that you mm-hmm. know and they shouldn't be acting like that yeah Before yes, anyone yes Ross before anyone uh, uh, com- uh, tries to uh, correct me on the vaccination rate for New Zealand or Australia, uh, we're currently now at seventy eight point seventy five point eight because we now include the one to fives. Mm. So the five, the fives, the five to tens of the adult population, it is where I'm currently live. It's ninety four point eight of the adult population, sixteen and up, double vaccinated. Where I work, it's ninety six point four. They actually can't calculate it any higher than that because census data may not be accurate. Well, let me ask you this. Though. But they, have, they have a 3% margin of error. <laughs> yeah, but Ross, let me ask you this, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it, 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 oh, now I forgot what I was going to ask you. Oh, boy. My Why mind. is it so effective here? Because we don't have uh, health hesitancy. Well, that could be. But I'm saying that, that uh, we, you know, our problem mm-hmm. here is that I think we get a lot of conflicting messages. I mean, my I don't think the conflicting messages are enough that I'm not gonna go out and get myself a shot, okay? Because I'm gonna do everything I can to protect myself. And I don't know what the level of protection is or whether it protects against Omicron or doesn't protect against Omicron, but I do know that if I don't have it, I'm not protected at all. Yes, Jason. So. Hmm. I'm an atheist, and I don't know if there's anybody here who is actually really religious, and that's why I really want to ask this question to somebody. Is it not sacrilegious to sit there and use your religion as an excuse not to get a shot if it's really not against your religion? Mm, I don't, you know, I don't, most pastors have been saying to their parishioners 
that uh, they should all go out and get the shots. There's nothing against their religion. Uh, I think the only religion that may have a problem with it is are the Christian the scientists. Christian scientists. Yeah, yeah, and that's about it. But yeah. like, and that's the whole thing about. I, I remember some stories in uh, Christianity or something about you know the people sitting on their porch and a storm coming or whatever to take shelter. Well, if God wants to take me, no, go take shelter. <laughs> and that's the same thing with this. But to me, it seems as this you know mm -hmm. it's sacrilegious to sit there and use your religion to sit there and say I don't want to get a shot because you're scared or whatever. But to try to use your religion against it. Yeah, like, they're gonna go. They're gonna go see. see they're gonna go meet Aunt Minnie in the afterlife. Honestly, I think those are the people who they're using their their religion as the excuse to not do it but they're not religious themselves these are the people who are like they can't yeah, i'm a good christian i go to yeah. i go to christmas i go to mass every christmas it's like no you don't yeah but what, what, what where in the where in the christian religion does it say don't get vaccinated yeah because there was vaccinations during jesus's time were there oh there were no there weren't uh, there's a classic quote that i've often said that if your god believes that other people should suffer then maybe you need a new god <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, Alan. So, Ross, in, in Australia, I have friends in Sydney, Australia. I remember. They, they were only offered the AZ, the AstraZeneca. Yes. And they, they're, they're all double vaccinated. Mm -hmm. AZ in England is not doing very well against Omicron. And in England, they've had a couple people die from Omicron in mm -hmm. the past couple of days. Here in America, Omicron is picking up mainly in New York and in New Jersey, but so far, still 98% of the people that are hospitalized or are dying are unvaccinated mm -hmm. people and they're dying of Delta so far. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm just done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm um, sorry. Uh, yeah, the at the time, yes, AstraZeneca was because we could produce it locally was the main uh, pushed vaccine in Australia until all the blood clot problems came up and then they basically said you know, okay um only only certain pe groups of people could take the astrazeneca uh, vaccine it was like over 60s over 80s yeah. and it was like over you know it's like and then it, but then basically once uh cases in in sydney got so bad where like um they got to like you know mm -hmm. here, here's this one 1700 cases a day they were like no everyone just take get whatever vaccine you can get Right, but what was the, what's what's being offered there now? Are the mRNA? All of them, all of them. So AstraZeneca is that still an mRNA? No, it's no, no. no. Astra, AstraZeneca has actually been withdrawn from from use here. So, so the, not, what, what kind of vaccine is it? Omicron, and it didn't work real well against Delta. So, so what kind of vaccine is it? It's this. It's like it's kind of like an influenza style vaccine. So use that's, use that's a deactivated right. version of so like the, the Johnson and Johnson. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I, Johnson and Johnson was never sold in Australia. It was never it was never made available in Australia. Good. So all our AstraZeneca vaccine was actually sent to uh, the Pacific Islands and Middle East and stuff like that. Yeah, believe it or not, Johnson and Johnson actually has better efficacy against Delta than AstraZeneca. Mm -hmm. AstraZeneca just came out with a new. Um, what do you call it? When you give uh, somebody that's sick uh, antibodies. I can't think of what it's called now. Um, but AstraZeneca just came out with the people that are immune compromised in this country. This, the uh, FDA approved it for people that are immune compromised. Uh, monoclonal Here, here's, my, here's my question. Uh, when we first, when the third shot was available, or at least available here in New York, it wasn't available anywhere else. The oh, CDC hadn't well, recommended it yet. But Cuomo said you could go out and get it. Marjorie went out and took a, trotted us up to our local pharmacy, and we got the third shot. Now, my question is, I got that maybe three, four months ago. How effective is that now? Very. It takes about 28 days to get fully effective. And, and not, then not what the happens? third one, I thought. I, I thought I heard on the third one, it's almost instantaneous. It can't happen. Yeah, go look go look into it. Yeah. Uh, doesn't you know, work that well. Uh, uh, look at Josh sitting over there. Anything mm -hmm. to say, Josh? Not about vaccines. No. <laughs> <laughs> you got something else you want to talk about? 
Mm. I don't really know. Um, nothing, you know, I, I'm not really sure what's going on today, so nothing major. I mean, whatever else you want to talk about, we can, you know, talk about, but I, I don't really have anything on vaccines. Yeah, I, I didn't watch the news at all today. Anything go on yeah, that I should know about? Vernon? Busy day. Oh, you, Mike is you, Mike. Your mic isn't on. I'll be quiet, Vernon. Sorry about that. There we go. I didn't. I didn't want to. I didn't want to be coughing while with my mic. Yeah, you have a cough. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, but I'm isolated in my basement. So. Uh, okay. Uh, but uh, no, we. It's been raining all day today, so the rescue efforts have been hampered down in Western Kentucky after the tornado. Hmm. Okay. So, I mean, that's got to make it a real mess now. How heavy is yeah. the rain? It, it's been a light rain, but, you know, just enough to make everything muddy and yucky. But uh, the, the positive side of it is the number of unaccounted for people has dropped dramatically. I think there's only about eight people now that they say are not accounted for. So how many died total? Uh, right now, I think the count is like 76. That's, if you look at the just the absolute destruction that thing wreaked down there that's not bad no it's but it's going to go down in the record as the most death in a, a tornado incident in the state of kentucky right but how often oh, do you it's get like the huh? for the united states for one day it was the most deaths by a tornado <clears throat> yeah but how how uh uh how often do you get tornadoes down there now i, I, I heard not it that often not that often, but we did get a bad one that actually hit Louisville in 1974. Mm -hmm. And it did a bunch of destruction, but there weren't that many deaths as a result. It's too bad it didn't take Mitch McConnell with it. Yeah, would have been good. Uh, well, have you heard that, uh, the, that Trump is trying to recruit somebody to take Mitch out? <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. Wait a minute. He's take... not being too successful, though. When, when you say to take Mitch out, do you mean to... The next election. The next, the election. next election. Oh. Yeah. What has he got against Mitch McConnell? Mitch McConnell was <coughs> on his side for the longest time. Yeah, but Mitch McConnell is, is in favor of vaccination. Uh, he really jumped all over Trump uh, on the impeachment and said that's why he did not want to vote to, to convict him and remove him from office because we have a justice system and that's... Uh, that uh, the Justice Department and the criminal justice system will, will get him. He is not immune from that being an ex-president. Hmm. Wow. You mean the, the guy who claims to have executive privilege when he's not an executive anymore? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you lose your, uh, uh, here, I, we can bring uh, uh, Josh into this. But Josh, uh, you can't claim uh, executive privilege after you're no longer president, right? Well, not necessarily. I mean, not for like new communication or whatever, but I mean, you know, you still withhold the right to uh, private, you know, counseling that went on between you and your advisors, you know, at the time. Um, I mean, I don't know that there's any really ex expiration or anything on that. There, there may be something with uh, the National Record Keeping Act and all that and how the archives manages it and certain documents are released over a certain number of years, um, you know, through the Freedom of Information Act requests and everything, uh, you can get them after that or they're just put out, you know, sort of at a certain point there's a schedule. But I mean, you know, if you advise the president in a memo, um, you know, three years into his term, you know, January the 21st doesn't necessarily mean that the world can read the memo, you know, a year later is my understanding, you know, um, there's a period of time that passes before some of that comes out. And I mean, you know, they do have the right to, you know, keep some of that in confidence after the fact. And then the, the next president, the incoming president, or, or you know, the, the next president has some power, I believe, over some of that. I mean, it's a little complicated, so I don't know every single rule. Um, but is I don't there, believe that it goes away, you know, instantaneously. Is there any really actually precedent to that, though, or no? Well, I don't. I mean, it, 
I don't think there's anything quite, you know, controversial or anything about it. But I mean, this, you know, memos and, you know, all the records that are kept, emails, anything else like that, generally are released. Um, and I think, you know, a few waves or whatever based on when they were, some time frames and all that. As the new libraries and things like that are set up, but you know it's not necessarily like as soon as a president's term is over, the public or the historians have full access to everything. You know, really immediately there is a waiting period for some things to get done. I you know I don't know if it's set in stone or anything like that, mm -hmm. and then. There are things that, as far as I know, they can choose to put a privilege on for, you know, kind of indefinitely. You know, I mean, I think that there are documents that they can request to not have released, you know, at all, or at least. The, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Time, the, which usually is their death. Does the, do tax returns come under executive privilege? <laughs> uh, no. Um, they do not, but those are, you know, those are covered in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, just you're as a private citizen. Uh, but, you know, and I, I think the the current president, whoever they are, sometimes has some power to help former presidents out. Um, like a former president may want to have executive privilege for something and maybe someone's fighting it a, a lawsuit or a court order or a court order or you know one of these watchdog groups or whatever and it's been five or six seven years and they're saying they don't want it out yet i think the, the current president can can also be a, an executive order um, but, but that's that's exact things you know and things like that uh, uh, or take them away ross has his hand up brett ross I'm sorry, I, just, I, just, I had no idea what you guys were talking about, so I was looking at what you're referring to, because we don't hear about Trump anymore. Uh, in 2009, <laughs> Obama eliminated the ability for a former president to insist upon the secrecy of his documents. The sitting president alone would decide whether to honor a former president's request to keep records secret, which is the reason why Trump is also contesting it, is because it came from Obama. <laughs> Obama <laughs> prior, prior to that, it was the, in, in your, in your president comes from the Nixon I mean, from the Watergate tapes. Yeah, but, yeah, but Nixon, try, Nixon tried to get those tapes uh, quashed because they were considered presidential record. Yeah. And they, and they basically said no. And then um, yeah, then Bush that, did it in 2001. But it has to be something the that they have to... Yeah. It basically looks like it has to be something that they have to enact while they were already president. Okay. To basically say this file, it's, it's no different than, like, than, 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 than secret acts, secret documents in, in other governments is... This has to already be flagged as not to be open for 99 years at the point in which it's done. But I, I think it's just every president just honors that in order not for embarrassment for the United States. It, it, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so they'll, they'll usually have classifications for documents. And a lot of this was set up in the, uh, so like the NARA, you know, the act that authorized a lot of the stuff for the National uh, Archives and Records Administration, who now manages, you know, all the presidential library archives and things like that and permanent records uh, for things that, you know, went on during the presidential administrations and other things in the federal government. You know, they, they usually get most of the records i think and then they partner with the presidential libraries and stuff like that i mean i think they have things basically they just categorize them you know what i'm saying daily this that and the others you know middle ground sensitive and they always have you know those boxes or you know now electronic records that are going to be considered you know not for public consumption until a certain date and uh Sometimes they come out before and sometimes they don't. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, that's that's how you got to go about it. I mean, there are historians that are suing, um, not really suing, but 
filing these freedom of info these FOIA requests all the time, like over and over and over again. And I've I've heard so many of them in interviews and books saying, you know, I I couldn't get it, I couldn't get it, I couldn't get it. I, I mean, I was literally filling out like one a week, and eventually they would send me like half of it because I think I was driving them crazy, you know. And then, but the one thing that I really needed that I'm sure they oh, knew I man. needed, they blacked out. You know, I mean, it was just. I've heard a ton of people talk about their, their FOIA requests for some of these. Oh, I'm, and, I'm, doing uh, one, I'm doing one right now. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Wow. I think a lot of times what you'll get is uh, as people die, you know, you tend to get your document dumps. You know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, I don't know, maybe eight or ten years ago. Well, there, that, there, are documents, there are documents regarding the Kennedy assassination. The, yeah, they just put another, they they put a kibosh on for a hundred years or something. Yeah, yeah, right. right. And they just they just put a, a lot of them out a few days ago. But you know, like eight, maybe eight or ten years ago, there were um, there had been a few deaths of some prominent players from the Cuban Missile Crisis, and a bunch of documents were put out, and uh, you know it was major. It it changed the it changed a lot of what you know we knew or at least what we thought we knew I don't know. and then the and then the historiography of it changes you know you the narrative sort of adjusts yeah. or whatever based on new information so as people die it's, you know maybe trump will die and then we'll get them all like next week or what it's it's general, like, gen the general rule of thumb is it's usually 75 maybe. years since the file was created yeah it's a pretty long time right i mean it's 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 really really you don't get it all like i said the next day but you will get a lot of the more mundane stuff a few years out. You know, they will start putting out, as soon as they can get it set up, you'll start having access to all of your, the daily schedules and the, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like all the press conference transcripts and all that kind of stuff, as soon as they can get it set up and it'll just start coming out. But I mean, you're not, you're not gonna get anything, you know, let me ask Jeez. you. One, let me ask you one last question. Uh, pr pr executive uh, uh, privilege. Does that extend to states going after the guy? In other words, like New York is going after Trump here. Uh, do they right. have? To, can he yell executive privilege? Where that? Well, concerned? not necessarily. I mean, I think it just depends what it's about. It depends what they're suing him for or investigating him for. I mean. Uh, it's just completely case by case because I mean all the only thing executive privilege is ever going to cover is your conversation or or your your dialogue with yourself the president and an advisor on issues okay on on you know strategy or issues you know what do you think I should do here you know or <laughs> Mr. President this is what you should do here I've written it down or they chatted for 20 minutes and someone yeah. took notes but we can't see though you know that stuff is it's yeah. it's it's mimicked off attorney client privilege you know it's not the same but it's 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 uh mirrored off of that in a way and it's just set up to protect you know the confidence of the yeah. the two individuals or two or more or whatever from not having something that they said ever coming out in court or this, that, or the other, because they might have been just bouncing ideas, you know, off of You're each right. other or whatever. I mean, so I don't know to answer your question if that's how it would go or not, because it depends what they're asking. Right. I mean, okay. oh. if, if they're asking, yeah. did he have a meeting with so and so mm -hmm. on such and such a date? That's not going to be covered. Okay. Yeah. But what they talked about in the meeting might be covered, you know. Right. I mean, that's that's the difference, I think. Okay. Listen, I we got some other people that have joined us, and and uh, we want to bring them into the conversation. Hello. Good evening, Kevin. How are you? Good evening. How's everything in your neck of the woods? Okay. How's yours? Uh, uh we're uh, we're getting infected again. So, you know, happy 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 times are here again happy omicron uh, yes exactly uh and uh hello to ray renati who has hello. joined us can you hear me yes i can hear you just fine huh. i've always had so many mic problems so okay yeah. good no you don't have any mic right. problems all sounding very good and of course Char hey. charlie wallace how you doing hey alex 
Yeah. Doing good. Uh, no, no game tonight. <laughs> I got a forfeit for the last game, so I got I got away an hour early. Oh, you got away an hour early. I see. Okay. How long? Too many you... people on the COVID list. Huh? He said he had a forfeit. I was saying too many people on the COVID list. <laughs> no, probably. Oh, they're, they're not forfeiting. For <laughs> not forfeiting. They're not forfeiting. The Eagles have to play the the Washington football team, and there's a whole bunch of guys that are on the COVID list now for Washington. And they're going to push the game out till Tuesday instead of. Wait a minute! I don't. I, I, I just in fact, did they buy that? Yeah, um, yeah. And then they got to turn around and play Sunday again next. It's like week. a game every week next, every day next week. Exactly. <clears throat> More football for me. Hey, the Cowboys conspiracy because the Eagles are starting to creep up on them. <laughs> Cowboys. <laughs> Yeah. When is well, foot when is football season over now? See, I don't know these February, things. February, middle of February now. Really? They really have stretched. Oh, it's more like June. When I was a kid, when I was a kid, <laughs> football went from like about late September maybe to New Year's and that was it. Yep. That was football season. Yep. And yep, baseball season it. went from something like May or something like that to uh like October. And now they stretched it out and stretched it out and stretched it out. Yeah, that I bought that that money. Yeah. And it looks to me like they play basketball 24-7. Yeah, man, <laughs> summer leagues. But, yeah, the basketball, and then they, what they did was they extended the five-game series for playoffs to seven games, so they get more money there, you know. Now, what is this new football league that, uh, that uh, NBC is carrying? XFL? XFL? Is it XFL? Uh, yeah. Is it? Because I, I know that was one at one point in time. Well, XFL no, was, it's, was it's, Ed it's back. XFL has come and gone a bunch of times. <laughs> no, but is XFL is that XFL that's come back? And is it Ed Mc, Ed McMahon? Is it Vince McMahon uh, or is it just some <laughs> other people yeah. now? I think it Donald is, Trump. It is. It's Vince yeah. McMahon and it's a tax <laughs> sink. Oh, I said it's a tax sink. Yep. Okay. Because I, I, you know, I mean, I just, uh, I, well, I never cared about this stuff anyway. But all I know is when I was a kid, you know, there was a certain football season and that was it. And it was very short. And now it seems to go on forever. Yeah, it's the USFL coming back. USFL. Oh, USFL. Yeah. Wow. That's an old name from way years yeah. ago. Yeah, I just saw a really quick blurb at a commercial. They just say coming in spring. Yeah, Holy but, uh, but uh, um, NBC is carrying it and a couple of other... Yeah cable yeah. networks are carrying it so i guess maybe it's going to be a big deal but they probably are doing it because people want their football <clears throat> year round right why not now uh, uh so uh, so then uh, how many teams are in those leagues i saw there was maybe something like only six or something like that six or seven i don't know not worth one of them was named the stallions or something i don't know there were some strange names that didn't seem to make much sense Everybody's so sensitive, they're just going to call them colors. Well, no, they had a name. <laughs> they had no, you can't call them that. The the blues, the yeah, exactly. well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me look up USFL. Okay. Mm. USFL. Because what happened was. Gotta be careful what color you call them, too. Right? Yeah, that's yeah, true. Exactly. Can't, oh, really? Can't call them the colors. You, it, no. <laughs> the coloreds. No, you can't do that. Oh. Or the reds. <laughs> Or the yellows. Are you sure it's the USF? Yeah, no reds, no yellows, oh, no sure. blacks, no, the no browns. <laughs> there we go. Well, that knocks out the whole the spectrum United there. States football. You have to call them the fades. What teams? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I was right on one of them. I was right on oh, one of them, right? Well, uh, it's the Birmingham Stallions, the Houston Gamblers, the New Gamblers Orleans. Gamblers are going to protest. All right. Huh? Gamblers are going to protest. Okay. They're, they're a protected group. Yes, exactly. It's not my fault. <laughs> the, old, sensitive. the New Orleans <laughs> Breakers and the Tampa Bay Bandits. Oh, the Bandits. Ooh, oh. Bandits. That's not good for the Bandits. It should be the Tampa so, Bay so Tampa. Are, are, <laughs> are you telling me that this is a football <laughs> league with only four teams? Playoffs already started. <laughs> <laughs> Do any of the professional uh, football games or whatever, do they use women on, on any of these games? Tax the referees. Are, not in the referees, yeah. And, and referees. kickers. And kickers. coaches. Coaches. So you have a, cho uh, coaches, a chance, yeah. Jeff. 
isn't isn't there an NFL team that actually has a kicker as a woman? Mm, I know it's in no. college. Isn't she Australian? I know in college it is, but eventually what they will. prevents what prevents women from playing football? They get their asses kicked <laughs> well, really I badly. Mean, I don't know. I, I, no, I, they I, get their asses grabbed really bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Can you imagine? Just, I mean, just the upper body strength is just right. ridiculously different. They yeah. get destroyed. Three hundred oh, pounds. Except they're certain. Well, they could do. They could. They could hold. They could kick. Well, why? For instance, uh, uh, baseball is a kind of. Uh, I hate to say it's a non-athletic sport, but it really not, is. Yeah, well, it really is. Uh, mm -hmm. It's more. I always said that baseball wasn't a game of of, of strength. It was a game of skill. Yeah. Agility. Okay, and would you agree with me on skill. that, Charlie? It's a game of skill. Yeah. And who's to say a woman can't have that skill? Yeah, but when you're hitting the ball with a bat, it's muscle that's doing it too. Mm -hmm. And it's I don't know. man and a woman's body build is different. Well, considering mm -hmm. that I was never able to hit the ball, I can't me even be able to you know, or catch it. Discuss Look at that all the way. players who started hitting more home runs when they took steroids. You know, we had Barry Bonds. Uh, who was the other guy at the same time? I forgot Those, his name. Uh, McGuire. McGuire even admitted that he did it. He's the only one who admitted it. Yeah. Sosa. Sosa, took, he admitted it. Sosa um, did it. Uh, Bonds' let, friend let, let, went let to me jail. Just, let me just bring this up to you. I know the doctor. <laughs> I, had, I had an argument. I had an argument about um, uh, uh, the doping scandal that went on about you know the players taking steroids and things like that and i'm going who got hurt by that let's just examine this for a second Nobody. certainly not me or you who watch the games it actually made for a better game okay hank yeah. aaron got hurt no uh, i'm gonna, hurt. Throw, I'm gonna no. throw in chris benoit <laughs> <It's> <laughs> who, who was on roids killed his wife and his son Oh, that's a good point. Wow. Well, uh, yeah. Also, the kids, because these kids in high school started doing them, and they kept okay. starting them earlier and earlier. But here's yeah. my point: Does the public get hurt by, by, by people on steroids, by players on steroids, or do they just get a better game? And my second point is: Who does get hurt by steroids? And it's, it, wait a minute, let me finish. Yeah. It's, it, <laughs> it's the biggest the single ding -dong shrink. The boys. It's the biggest <sighs> single segment of of uh, sports fans. That's the gamblers, because steroids made it unpredictable. Bill Burr says they should all be on steroids. It'd be much better. He, exactly. Power <laughs> game. And and to your question about why. Um, about women in, in intergender matches in baseball. Yeah. The Australian base, women's baseball team, the Emeralds, went 14-6 yeah. to six against top American top American men's teams mm -hmm. in exhibition matches. Is that softball or baseball? No, that's full baseball. Cool. And they did yeah, there's what? There's no reason. They shouldn't. Well, they, they beat American male they teams? Beat, they beat the, an American all-star team 14-6. to six. <laughs> Was it a little league team? <laughs> no, was it was a <laughs> Was it professional to team nine-year-olds? <laughs> they threw the ball. They didn't hit the ball with a bat. <laughs> they had a pitching machine. Right there you go. Oh boy. Oh boy. Hey Brian, were you driving by my house like three weeks ago? No, I'm not socking you. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Because I saw a car like yours right near my house. No. Next time I'm over there, I'll definitely try to hit you up. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Why? Why would he be stalking you? Uh, no. I didn't know. Uh, no, because no, he bought a car right like a couple blocks yeah. from me. Yeah, yeah. The 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 McLaren dealer is right around the corner from Ray's house. So. Yeah. How much is that McLaren costing you to keep shit low? Uh, keep uh, keep going. <laughs> Does it break down a lot? Does it have problems? No, no, no. You can't you know, drive it, it much. It, it depends. Actually, I drive a lot, but it oh. depends on the car, <laughs> the actual car that you got. You know, I know some guys have a lot of problems with them, and this one, this one, I, you know. Had been around for a little bit, and I scoped it out, and this one's a good one. Just had one hose burst. And I don't know anything about cars either. There are a lot of male-oriented things I know nothing about, so maybe I was gay or something. I don't know. But, you were gay in a previous life. Uh, great gay in a previous life. <laughs> yeah. but, and a uh, baseball I heard that the worst car in the world was the Fiat. I had a Fiat Fix 850. It, again, it was a piece of shit. Yeah. Uh, I had to push it to start it. Well, mm -hmm. uh, when you're driving through the Italy, light. 
There are signs every like 10 miles that says Fiat dealership and, and an arrow doesn't, pointing to it. Like you got to go there because your car breaks down every 10 miles. I can drive a Jeep Compass that's basically it's a Fiat and it's a pretty good car. I had a Fiat 850. That thing broke down all the time and I had to buy the parts in the junkyard. And, yeah. and uh, one time there was one exactly like my car in front of me and I was behind him and the engine exploded. Nah. Like right in front of me. <laughs> Went on, got on fire. It was hilarious. Fiat we, stands for Fix It Again Tony. Well, yeah. I know that was the old joke, yeah. yeah. I think the newer ones are a lot better. Now, here's, a, here's, here's, a, here's an interesting thing. In, uh, in Spain, Fiat makes a car, but they can't call it Fiat. Fiat. You're right. It's a Fiat. And the reason, why was the reason for that? Did it mean something? The Pope. The Pope didn't want no, it to No, they had happen. a rule in Spain that you could not, if you were a company like Fiat and you wanted to build cars in Spain, you had to build cars in Spain, but you had to have a Spanish partner. And so when you had a Spanish partner, you usually came up with your own brand, and so they called it a Fiat instead of a Fiat. But it was the same exact car. Does the partner have to be a female? <clears throat> no. No. But she has to be mainly on the plane. Because it rains. Yeah, okay. Well, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. That didn't work. That was better, okay, than, I, I, my, that was better than mine. Oh, right? Ten minute penalty of me not talking. <clears throat> Did Marjorie ever go to Spain with you, Alex? No, she's ne never gone to Spain with me. We went to Italy together. Ibiza. But we never went to Spain. Now, I don't want to go back to Ibiza. I'd be too disappointed in it. You know. I remember all the like wild times you used to talk about having over there. Yeah, but uh, but I I uh, you know when I went over there, very few people went there, mm. and it was kind of and the last time I went, it was starting to build up a little bit, but now it's just this party island. Bunch yeah. of ravers, huh? Bunch of ravers. Bunch of rapers, yeah. Ravers, yeah, ravers, ravers. ravers. Oh, oh, I thought you said rapers. Bunch of rapers. Oh, <laughs> no raver. No, raver. Oh, that's Epstein's island. Yeah. That too. <laughs> yeah. How, hello, Jack Bishop. Hmm. There he is. Where are you? <laughs> hey, there we go. Hey, listen. I owned Fiat's for years. Yeah. <laughs> and he did know a guy named Tony. <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, I had good service out of them. I did not have any uh, unusual problems and not too many problems uh, that you would not experience with any kind. Worse product bought a brand new Chevrolet in 72 worst car I ever owned mm -hmm. and uh, uh, talking about Seat Seat is owned by Volkswagen for a couple of decades no yeah no it was owned by Fiat and then a a, uh, a Spanish um uh, group. But right now, for the last few decades, the last two or three decades, Seat is a division of Volkswagen. Really? Yes. I think they are now, yeah. Yeah. Volkswagen owns a lot of Let different Let me ask, Ross, are you there, Ross? Ross went somewhere, I guess. Uh, because I wanted to ask him about us if there are any indigenous Australian automobiles. Not anymore. Not, what do you mean, not anymore? Well, uh, <clears throat> Australia got its first indigenous uh, brand in 1948 called a Holden, mm. oh, which yeah. was yeah. General Motors. And they, they quit building them uh, just a few years ago. So mm. the Subaru Outback isn't an Australian? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we still got one out back in my garage. We had two up until here a couple of months ago. I had one. And I had to sell it. Do you know I haven't owned a car since 2013? Well, you're a lucky man. I, mm -hmm. Almost 18 years I have not owned a car. Well, uh, I quit driving. A lot of I quit driving here a couple of months ago just because I was concerned about driving, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And uh, 
the um, the situation here in Texas, and Charlie can go along with me on this, I'm sure. Uh, the similarity between not having a car in Texas is, along with having a permanent, a hair. You're breaking up on us. Yeah, oh, really, really, really bad. Oh, okay. okay well, I'm through. Get you at the uh, top of the hour for the okay. intersection. See you later. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. Uh, yeah, he was starting to break up on Jack us. Jack should have bought the '73 Chevy. It was Car and Driver's Car of the Year. Uh, Jack should buy a mesh Wi-Fi network for his house. I just put in yeah. a mesh Wi-Fi network here. Oh, I was listening to an episode of you talking about it, and I was yeah. telling you about mesh Wi-Fi years ago. Yeah, yeah, no, but it, it was the easiest thing I ever had to install. I gotta get one. For, for months, he's been breaking up on Skype just like that. Yeah. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, it could hmm. be terrible whatever where he is. Ross, are you there? He's probably... Uh, I think he's long oh, gone. He's still not there. No, I don't think he hung up. I think he just had to, something he had to do. So, it? Charlie, do you know the analogy he was trying to say? The analogy that Jack was going to say? Yeah. No, I didn't get Texas enough thing? Oh. Well, Jack told Probably me... He's good at just agreeing with Jack. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> yep, yep, Jack yep. told me he stopped uh, driving. Has he said that? I've talked about that on his he show. Just he that. just said it right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that he has uh, decided to stop driving. And my business manager, Gary, who is 84 years old, by the way, uh, has decided not to drive, too. And uh, I don't know whether I even can drive anymore. I cannot wait till the day that I decide I'm going to stop driving. Hmm. Well, I think if I were still in California and I still had a car and I was still driving every day, I don't think I would give up on it. Uh, I mean, I enjoy driving too much. But I've gone so long without driving a car. About the last time I drove a car was maybe four years ago. That I don't know how I how I would fare driving now. I wouldn't do it. You know, I don't have the I don't have the energy I once had. You know, I'm telling you, I'm I, I, in a, in another uh, seven minutes. I'm going to be 82 years old. Woo! <laughs> And I feel it. <laughs> yeah, no, don't no, don't even start with that. My <laughs> wife came in when I first came on and said, "It's Alex Bennett's birthday." Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, it's not yet. Not yet. Depends on where you're at in the country. You have a little over three hours here in California. Do you remember when? What you remember when you were a kid? Well, actually, I should go by California time because yeah, that's, that's where I was born. Birthplace. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, okay. So I'm not I'm not 82 yet. When I oh, when you were a kid, God. you 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 always you never um, you always were pressing how old you were. Like you know I mean and I'm sure half. Adrian, Brian, when you ask how old she is, she goes how old is she now? Uh, by the way, Brian. She just turned six. But she yeah, just five, turned six. Five and a half. Yeah. Five, six, and six, six and three quarters. Six and three quarters. Six and eight months. You know, where when you're when you get older, you're not eighty-two until the clock strikes midnight. You know, up until that time, you're eighty-one, which is bad enough mm -hmm. as it is already. You know. Hey, Alex, like I just found a web page of famous people with their birthday, and you're on here. Really? Yes. Oh, of course. Allfamousbirthdays.com. There you are. There's your birthday there today. Are. Really? Oh. All? Yes. No. All... I swear to God, I'm looking at it right now. What's it called? All Famous Birthdays? All Famous Birthday, singular, dot okay. com. All Famous, Famous, Bir Famous Birthday. Yeah. Famous, oh, that's an R. Dot com. Uh, 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 well, all famous birthdays comes up immediately, and then probably that's it. All famous birthdays. Uh, let me see here. Most famous birthdays. I just put the singular. link. I just put the link in the chat. No, singular the, birthday. Yeah, it's singular. singular. Yeah, wait a minute. You just put the link in the <laughs> chat. Where, yeah, down below. Yeah. Where is the chat here? Let On me the see bottom. Here. Okay, I'm gonna go find it here. Let me see here. Uh, it, I don't see it. 
I, it's not, I'm looking at. Oh, oh, it's in the chat. What? In oh, the, I see it. it. Yeah. Zoom yeah. chat. On the in the in the Zoom chat. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't do. Well, I can I, I don't want to go oh, to the Zoom okay. chat because it causes me a problem. Uh, <clears throat> um, well, but wait a minute. What is it? All famous birthdays. All famous. No, birthday. Birth day. I day, know. Not all days. famous. Birthday. Birthday. Dot com. Dot com. Okay, well, it doesn't come up. All? I don't know. It came up for me. The link you sent, it. Ray, I got it. It yeah. came up. Wait a minute. I can't even see. It had Alex I Bennett right at the bottom my, there. I need my glasses. Said he was 104. It says birth. you're a famous radio personality. Birthday.com. Oh, it has your net worth. <laughs> dollars <laughs> and 85 cents what what, what 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 does it have as my net worth 1.5 million one my 1.5 million yeah was that before or after the trial have they got the, have, have, have they, have they got the right person yeah this is you yeah for the trial alex what? bennett married very day Put that down. And... <laughs> no, I, I, read the biography. I'll have to go look at Wait it. Wait a minute. It's all screwed up. It says you're, <laughs> first it says you're a radio personality, and then it says you're a female English swimmer. Yeah. And it, What the oh. hell? You got the wrong <laughs> Alex Bennett. No, no, it's the right one. They just mixed up two different people. <laughs> See, when I was putting it in on YouTube today, I got Alex Bennett Barstool. What? <laughs> I, I don't know if it's some sports show or something. <laughs> It was, is that kind of man, funny man, sports, Alex Bennett? My, <laughs> Go down further. It says, according to our records, Alex Bennett is possibly single and has not been previous engaged. Yeah, that's previously what it says. Engaged. As of June <laughs> 2021, like four Alex or five Bennett times. is not dating anyone. He's not dating anyone? Uh, well, you're not dating anyone. You're married. So that's right. <laughs> Nobody's spying on you. I got so news good. for you. At 82, I'm dating everybody. <laughs> but it has your date of birth right, so that's good. Oh, he hasn't really? been the biggest whore ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh man. But uh, you know, I mean it it's it uh, I don't know. 82. Jeez, almighty. Mm. You know. This is amazing. Uh, I'm just so happy that I know somebody who's older than me. Oh, just shut up. Oh. Oh. <laughs> On that note, good night. But, well, Brian, let's see. Brian is the well, Jason, how old are you? Um, I am not the youngest person here. Brian is? No. Uh, uh, Josh. Josh. Josh? Uh, yeah, oh. Josh is Oh, younger. yeah, Josh is the youngest one here. He's like 35 or I something. I like think that. of him as the oldest one here because he's such an old Tony, soul. Tony's you know? an old soul. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, 32? I don't know. Huh? So I'm trying to guess how old Josh is. Yeah. Uh, no, he's like, uh, what, you're like 38? Uh, 48. I'm, like, I'm 42. I think you're 48, aren't you, Josh? No. Oh, 38. 48? 38. 38. I don't think he's 48. No, I guess 35. But Kevin, you know how old 30. he is, don't you? No, I don't. Oh. No, to be honest with you. <laughs> okay. And he ain't saying. Well, anyway, there's our theme song. Uh, everybody, thank you so much, Jeff. Nice having you Happy here tonight. Happy birthday! Uh, Alan, thank you for being here. Josh, terrific having you here. Ross, if you can hear me, uh, nice having you calling us from Australia. Really appreciate it. Uh, and, of course, Other, it's very nice to have you here as well. Uh, Brian Neary, nice to have you. Uh, Happy birthday. Kevin and Ray Renati and Charlie Wallace and Vernon Null and uh, you know what can I say but have a nice uh, nice uh, let's see here oh we're not this is the last time we do our Saturday we'll have two shows next week and then we're off for like a week days? and a half uh, uh, Wednesday and Thursday I'll be here okay and we'll be here Monday with the Monday show anyway everybody give a big wave goodbye and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you okay there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our uh, citizen panel for tonight. Uh, and uh, they've done a very nice job. We appreciate it. And uh, that's about it, actually. Uh, we have no more. Uh, 
Uh, the intersection is next with Jack Bishop over most of the same gab net. Uh, we'll see you again. Let's see here. Uh, we'll see you again uh, on Monday with the uh, pop-up show that we do at 4 o'clock on Facebook. And then we'll be back here on YouTube uh, again live, 1030 Eastern Time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And also, please get vaccinated and wear a mask. And if you're doing all of those things, God bless you. Anyway, I'll see you on the other side of 82. Bye. Bye.